Okay, everybody, welcome. Uh, thank you for your patience. Sorry for the delays. It, it, appeared, appear, it appeared to be working, so. Um, right, bandwidth optimization in responsive web design. My name is René Krijveld. Um, I'm a Joomla web developer since, 19, since 2004. Um, oh, it's going too fast. Um, I work for DSD Business Automation and uh, my own company two days per week. Um, I'm specialized in responsive web design, run content-based web applications, complex RS form, forms, and uh, Joomla web server setups. And you can reach me on Twitter, Skype, and Facebook. Um, my life outside Joomla, because I do a little bit more than just Joomla. I love running, I play drums, and I do training with Mila, and that's a Bracco Italiano. It's a, an Italian hunting dog. This is her. Um, tomorrow I won't be here, and I have my first hunting exam, so it'll be exciting. Um, before we go on, I have to write, say a little bit of the disclaimer. Um, the solutions presented here, they work for me, they might not work for you. Um, try experiment with it, uh, use my suggestions, uh, and before you do anything, back up, back up, and back up again, because you never know what happens. Okay, responsive templates. Who in the audience here builds responsive templates? Cool, a lot of people. Good. Uh, based on what CSS framework do you build your templates? Uh, bootstrap? Custom. Foundation? Custom? Cool. Um, do you build yourself or do you buy a template and then customize it for your clients or for yourself? Both. Both, okay. Well, I'm. Um, I personally built all my templates from scratch using a blank template. Uh, really, really good tool. It's got bootstrap inside. It's got foundation if you want. So you can choose whether, uh, what CSS framework you want to use. Um, the most frameworks of two, two well-known frameworks at the moment is uh, Twitter bootstrap and foundation. Uh, they're very widely used. Um, both have their pros and cons. Um, but there are much more CSS frameworks out there in the wild. There's HTML boilerplate, responsive grid system, Titan, uh, groundwork, base. Um, if you Google on CSS and responsive frameworks, you get a whole list of frameworks. So there, there's, there's much available that you can use for your project. Um, media queries are used a lot in CSS3 nowadays. Um, it, it just applies CSS rules based on the viewport resolutions. Um, I've got some example code. Um, first line says, um, if your resolution is no wider than 600 pixels, then apply this background color to the class. Um, the second example says, if your screen is at least 600 pixels wide, then apply uh, another background color. And uh, the third example just shows, uh, if your screen resolution is between 600 and 900 pixels, you can apply this background color. So it's, it's based on the resolution of the viewport. Um, often there are special CSS classes to hide content at a certain resolution. And Twitter Bootstrap uses responsive, ut responsive utility classes like hidden phone or hidden desktop. And Foundation Zerp uses other classes to identify the width of the screen or the, or the viewport. Um, there's an advantage on it. Uh, you can easily hide content on certain devices based on the resolutions. Uh, there's a usage, for example, in the template code or as a module class, you can add uh, space hidden dash phone and it, it'll hide that element on uh, the resolution for a smartphone. There's a disadvantage on it. Um, the content is only visually hidden. Uh, all content is still downloaded to the device and that's unnecessary use of bandwidth. Um, I can demonstrate it in a little example. I have here a, uh, an example website. It's built with uh, Twitter Bootstrap. And as you see, there's a slider here with a lot of uh, nice images. And if I reduce the screen resolution, you see the slider automatically uh, is reduced. It's still on the screen. Um, and if I would want to hide this slider on my smartphone, and I can simply add uh, a, a small addition to the code. Here is the, the index.php of this template. And if I look for the slider, that's here, section class is slider, and it loads a module with a module position called carousel. This is a Joomla template. And if I simply add here, hidden dash phone, 
and save it and go back to the template and refresh the screen. What you'll see then is if I narrow the screen at the smartphone resolution, the slider is gone. But the content is still there because if I look with Firebug inside the code, And I can see here my section class is slider. And you see it's grayed out now, so it's, it's hidden for the view. But the, the content in it is still uh, very much there. I see all the, uh, the images there. Uh, so it, it means it's, it's really not hidden. Uh, the content is still used. Uh, I can also show that when I measure the amount of space used or the, or the bandwidth used. Um, if I look at the document size, you will see that the size of this page is uh, 1106 kilobytes. Oh, that's just about one megabyte to display all the information. If I narrow the screen, the slider is gone, but if I check the document size, it's still 1106 kilobytes. So there's, there's nothing's changed. So if a visitor with a mobile phone would see this web page, um, he would still have to download this one megabyte of data. That can be a, a disadvantage. So these media queries, they are based on viewport resolutions. Um, and modern iPhones and iPads, they have really high resolutions. Uh, the, the iPhone has a resolution of 1136 by 640 pixels. Um, and an iPad has even an iPad 4 has 2,000 by 1,500 pixels. Um, so my conclusion on media queries is, um, if you want to save bandwidth by hiding certain content on tablets and mobiles, doing this based on the viewport might not be the best solution. It might be a better option to hide certain content on tables and mobiles based on the browser and the device that the website visitor uses, right? So what you can do to determine this is the user agent. And the user agent string is a unique definition of the browser and the operating system. Um, in HTTP, the user string is often used for content negotiation, where origin servant selects suitable content or operating parameters for the response. So based on the, on the device, the server might send other data to the device. And the user agent can be determined on the client side and on the server side. On the client side, you can check what user agent is loaded with JavaScript, for example. And on the server side, you could check that with PHP. And then it's becoming interesting. Um, I want to show you a small demo with user agent detection built inside Joomla. Um, and I use two tools a lot um, within, within Firefox. I use the web developer toolbar. You've already seen it. And I use user agent switcher. Um, first thing I would like to see is a website uh, for an athletics association. It's built with Twitter Bootstrap, and I have separate layouts in one template for desktop, tablet, and mobile. This is the uh, particular website. Um, it's got a slider as well. Um, it's got some informational uh, image at the top. It's got news messages with images in it. Uh, banners, uh, so it's, it's got quite some, some information. If, if, if we check the document size, we see this website of this page costs us one of 811 kilobytes of data. It's not that much, but it's, it's quite an amount. Now what happens if I let my browser act as if it is an iPhone? Uh, to do that, I can use the user agent switcher, and by clicking iPhone, I can have my browser simulate it is an iPhone by sending the user agent string that's normally present in an iPhone. And if I refresh the screen then, what you'll see is the same website, but presented in a different way. And if we check the, the bandwidth that we've used, document size, that's 362 kilobytes. So that, that's a reduction of uh, over half of the size. Um, Another example that I can show you is a Publicando website. Uh, that's the website we've built for our default Joomla distribution for our clients. It's also built with Twitter Bootstrap. And it also has separate layouts for desktop, tablet, and mobile. 
And if you check this website, uh, you can't see it right now because it has a, a large background image, but due to the resolution, it's not visible, but it's there. Um, it's got a lot of information. It's got informational images. And if we refresh this screen also for mobile, you see a different presentation of the same content. Uh, the size that we've used for the mobile is 420 kilobytes. And if I switch back to the, d the normal desktop view by setting the default user agent and refresh the screen again. Sorry. Then the document size is 869 kilobytes. So here we see that by switching to a different device, uh, there's actually less data sent to the device. Now, how did I build this and uh, use this in my template? Um, there's a PHP library available that reads the user agent on the server side. Um, it's available on GitHub and it's called Mobile Detect. Uh, and it can detect if the device is a desktop or a tablet or a mobile. Uh, but it can also detect if your device is running iOS or, or Android or if it's a, it's a Blackberry. It can detect a whole lot more. There are regular updates for new user agents because when a company builds a new mobile phone, then a new ag user agent string is defined. So there are very many regular updates for this detection library. So how can we use it? It's really simple. Um, inside your template code, you simply load the mobile detect library. Uh, that's the first line. And then you set a variable saying uh, detect is new mobile detect. So this variable can then be used to determine whether it's a mobile or a tablet. Uh, but you can also write, uh, add a simple line of code um, that says the layout is, and then the variable, uh, the, the value tablet or mobile is or desktop is stored inside this variable. And then I can load a module based on um, what kind of a device it is. That means uh, if your device is a mobile, you can simply exclude a slideshow module. It's really, really simple to use. But what about other extensions? Um, when loading mobile detect in your template code, the test is only available inside your template. Um, wouldn't it be handy if you knew everywhere, so in templates, but also in components, plugins and modules, what kind of device your visitor has? And to use that, I created a system plugin called User Agent Detector. Um, it's available on GitHub. You can download it for free. Um, and I regularly update it, and it's a system plugin that uses the mobile detect PHP library. Um, this plugin sets a session variable with the user agent layout, and it's available for Joomla 2.5 and 3.0, and I think within a week it's also available for Joomla 3.1. Um, the code use is very simple. Um, inside your template, or your module, or your component code, or your plugin code, um, uh, you can read a session variable, uh, and a session variable is being set with the value of the user agent. So the first line here is session is jfactory get session. With that, I open up the session variables in memory, and in the variable UA layout, I store the value of the user agent. And then you can test inside your code if the user layout is a desktop or a mobile. Uh, and based on that, you can enter the code. Well, the user agent layout has um, four possible values. It has the value desktop, or tablet, or mobile, or bot. Um, that can be very interesting uh, because search engines index your website by sending a spider bot to your website. Um, there are many spider bots available, Googlebot, Bing, Yahoo Slurp, Amazon, bot. There, there are many of these uh, spider bots available. Um, so spider bots are also actually website visitors. And each spider bot has a unique user agent. Um, so mobile detect PHP library, the library that I found on the internet, it can identify spider bots and then it will become uh, easy. Template experiment, I've created a template experiment. Um, this is uh, some extraction of template code um, that I've written. Uh, at the top of my template, I set the session variable UA layout. 
And if you look at line uh, 10, I can say if the user that is visiting my website is a Google bot or a spider bot, I can uh, not load CSS and JavaScript. So normally I would load CSS and JavaScript to display my template. But if it's a bot, I will not load CSS and JavaScript in the header. Then in the body, I can check if the user layout is not a bot. That's a test at line 15. Uh, then we normally load all HTML and Joomla template codes. But if it's a, it is a spider bot, then I will load all normal Joomla content, like the component and all the modules, but I'll display it in a source ordered manner. That means I first load the component and after that all the modules. So I'll be presenting the same content as the normal website, but in a source ordered variation. Um, caution, use it at your own risk. Uh, I'm not responsible for accidents. Um, what we did is we created uh, a few websites with this Google bot detection, and based on that, we've presented the content in a Google optimized way. And we've reached some spectacular results. Um, the uh, organic results went up from 15% uh, of all our, our visitors up to 50%. So we had an increase of more than 35% of uh, organic searches, and that's quite an increase uh, of our visitors. I can demo the spiderbot detection. This is the same athletics website. Um, it's got everything as usual. Uh, let's check the information of the document size. The document size is 809 kilobytes. Now what if I um, uh, simulate that a spiderbot visits my website? Uh, suppose a Google bot comes by. And what does the website look then? It looks like this. There's no CSS loaded, there's no JavaScript loaded, but all the content that's on the normal web website is still presented to the visitors. Uh, let's see how much size this is. It's only 28 kilobytes. All the navigation is there. This is the normal content. This is the complete menu. I, I'm loading all the con normal content and I'm loading all the modules. Uh, if, you, if we go back to the normal website, here is the normal menu as a drop down menu. Um, here is a an, an sort of events list. Uh, here are results of people doing running exercises. Um, here is a news block and here is the is the latest news. Now let's check how it looks with the Google Spider. This is the interaction text. Here are my uh, normal messages. Uh, here are the two messages at the top. Here is the menu. Here is the events module, the results module. Here is the latest news. So all content is there. It's just st stripped. I've got one image left, which is the favicon. I've got no scripts, no style sheets. So everything is reduced to 28 kilobytes. So this loads really, really fast. Um, the thing is, and I'm not that much of an SEO expert, would we do something wrong regarding to Google? Because we're not loading JavaScript. We're not loading CSS. We are. You're presenting a different site. Mm -hmm. Okay, so w one of the things that Google evaluates when you visit a normal site is the load speed. Mm -hmm. Load speed for the user, not for the, the bot. Uh, additionally, we want to see the, the preview of the site when you have a result. So but that, that, that's skipped from the results anyway, nowadays. Okay. Yeah. But um, it's dangerous territory because it can work for a while and then it can really backfire. Yeah. We're now running it for two months, and we, we've seen this tremendous increase of, of traffic, and, and we've, we're better ranked in Google. Uh, but I'm not really sure whether we're on a thin line here. You are. You are. You are. You are. If, if, you, if, you take, if, you, if you take it strictly, you're on a thin line. Mm -hmm. But maybe they also say, okay, you're not presenting something completely different. So they are deceptive. Yeah. Just checking which is really, right? 
I know you could you could present really different content. Well, if you look strictly at the content uh, without the CSS, for example, uh, you would determine that we've lo we're loading exactly the same content. We're loading exactly the same modules. We're loading exactly the same menus. So, so maybe not the same links very much. Uh, yeah, so maybe, but, but we are. We are. In fact, we are. You've got it, but someone else might not. Even though they've got the yeah. Well, the, the way I've, I view it is um, um, I see it as the same technique as presenting uh, different content for a different device. Uh, I'm presenting the same content or leaving out things for a mobile. Um, so how would that then uh, relate to Google? Because there's, a, there's a, a normal Google bot that visits your site, but there's also the mobile bot. Does Google determine the, the differences between these two? Same goes with the uh, with the uh, with the normal Publicando website. Um, uh, if I recall the the information about the document size, um, this is 870 kilobytes. Uh, if I look at the Spiderbot version, um, it's got the same text. Only we, we've left in the only the header image, uh, the same navigation, uh, and the size here is also dramatically reduced. It's 40 kilobytes with no style sheet and no scripts. So it's we've got the same result and we've got a, the same tremendous increase. Theo. Uh, why is your example thing well because you will run lots of drivers? So uh, let us in the process how it does. Let's say it's in a page of HTML, two different search engines, while still the same image is but slightly bigger. Mm -hmm. And as you reference it, what you're doing has one of the non accepted guidelines. Okay. So with respect to SEO, this might not be a good thing to do. Um, another another um, thing you could use this technique for is uh, uh, at, at the Dutch Joomla days, I, we had an intense discussion with uh, Anje Radka, who is uh, working on accessibility. Um, people with disabilities might use a screen reader. You could determine that your site is being visited or being read by a screen reader because that's also got a unique user agent. And then you could present content optimized for screen readers. This way you can serve out a web page better for people with disabilities. So there's, there's plenty of use for the technique that I've demonstrated. Um, I agree that for Google we might be on a thin line here. We, we've had good results so far. Um, uh, but, but I think it's, 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 it's usable, but it's tricky. Okay, that was it. Quite fast, quite fast. <laughs> yes. Sorry? Does it support caching? Yes, it does. Uh, a colleague of mine has tested it with caching, and uh, that, that works without a problem. Okay. Mobile detect dot PHP. <coughs> it, it was first supported by, uh, by Google, and then uh, a developer took it over and, and in is in uh, further improved the, the code. Hans? Will there still be a live project? Of course. Okay. Today. Yeah. yeah. Do you have to update the things that will turn out the mobile stuff early? Do you have to take it and update it on your website? Exactly. There, there you can do two things. Uh, look at where the, uh, the, the, the plugin code is on your website and simply overwrite the mobile detect B PHP. Um, I've also uh, created the plugin in a way that you can update it using the Joomla updater. So that's the three bits uh, linked to three versions? Of what? Of, of, the, of the site. So if I want the full browser version on my site, mm -hmm. do you have to provide a link to that? No. You would have to uh, somehow uh, incorporate into your template uh, an extra URL variable stating that uh, I, I overwrite the fact that uh, I'm determining the user agent and then serve out the, the desktop version anyway. So it, it can be done. It, it needs a little P 
PHP code, so it's not that difficult, but. It's one thing that drives me nuts is being on my iPad and seeing that a mobile site. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, for, for the sites that, that we've built, um, we've created mobile versions as well, or template, tablet versions as well. Uh, if you get back to, the, uh, to the, um, the website of the athletics agency, it's got a drop-down menu, which uh, shows pretty when you hover over it. You can't do that on an iPad. So if I look at the iPad version of the website, uh, like this, and refresh, um, then there's no drop-down, but I've created a, a split menu for it. So then here we have the, uh, if we go to uh, sports, for example, then here are the, the, the sub options. So I'm just presenting a, a different menu based on uh, whether it's a tablet or not. So it's still usable for, for, for tablet users this way. Yeah. Uh, well, um, <laughs> compared to the default version, uh, the drop downs work, but we're presenting the sub the, we're presenting the sub menus in the left side anyway. You see here the sub. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it can be handy just uh, because the menu can be quite deep. If you go to the, the fourth or the fifth level, um, it might not be too handy to uh, to, uh, to use the left side, and then you can use it uh, as a drop down menu. Exactly. Yeah, we charge extra. Well, we, we try to get, again, to get a handle on analytics or, or some way of statistics so that we can see how much percentage of the visitors uses a mobile device. And often, uh, uh, it's going up to 20 to 25%. Uh, so they're potentially uh, missing out on presenting the content in the best way for a mobile device. So then, uh, uh, it's, it's a good solution to present a responsive website. Uh, but we, we, we always do it as, a, as, an, op as an option in our uh, quotes for, to our clients. Yeah, they, they might decide that they don't want it, yeah. it but we, we present them the benefits. <laughs> I, pr uh, I have this thing with one customer that he's going off to the Sugar Land Olympics and he's dropping out all mobile users yeah. because his website is just not working for them. Like yeah. He's, he's pushed with whatever he has to do to get something done and it's not really working. And I just saw him this weekend, I think about 70 customers from his team from mobile devices. Yeah, last week I had a discussion with a client who said, well, what's the problem? I can simply squeeze my phone and, and, and I, I can see the, the website as well. So, well, if you like to do that, but most users don't want to do that. They want the content presented on, in, in a better way. So do you ask potential like, clients to Google Analytics for like, desktop no, no, and mobile? No, no, the customer and for about four, four years. Uh, and okay. I, I think about two and a half years I tell them, you should change something and also on a regular basis, like every three months, every month, I show him what dropped out. And well, it's not just me, not you are. So, yeah, it's not just me. It's the funny guy. Are you yeah. always still serving content images to, to people? It's not just background images, but just if there's an image that's been in your article, yeah. people will still get that. Yeah, and we, we f we've n even noticed that if you name the image uh, with interesting information, uh, it gets ranked even better. Um, um, we, we've had an, uh, on our Publicano website, uh, th this is the Joomla version. On the old version, we had a, a, a lady here with a, with a phone by her head. And um, um, the, the image name was called uh, phone.jpg. All the time we got on the, in our search result, this phone picture kept popping up at the top. Uh, that, that was quite interesting. And then uh, in this new version, we've removed the image, but we've created uh, much better names for the images, like uh, um, uh, a, a name really uh, 
almost as the same as the header of the of the article and we see that the, the there's, there's an, a tremendous increase in organic results based on the better names of the images so that's that we found that quite interesting <laughs> we didn't know that it, that could be that good of a, of a result Well, I'm, I'm not quite sure because um, um, if you look at, th at this example, uh, these are quite big images. Why would you serve them out to a mobile device? That's it's why would you serve them out to the desktop user? Because yeah. if it's useless, it's useless. Just leave it out. But but it, the desktop user, it's not it's not hurting for the desktop user because he's usually on a on a uh, how do I say on a, on a on a normal internet connection, not on a 3G connection. Well, let, let me correct myself. Um, um, I said not good for a mobile device. What I meant is um, uh, not good in a way that it uses a lot of bandwidth. Yeah, yeah. So, wh wh what we would need is somehow of determining. Uh, it's, it's not there yet. Or I think there are some developments in that direction. Is to determine what kind of the wh what the speed of the connection is, and based on that, serve out so some th something yes or no. Yeah. With this particular device, uh, uh, my client said, "I want, I don't want this slider on a mobile device." But y you don't, you don't have to do it. I, I just present yeah. a way of hiding it on a mobile device. Exactly. Yeah. True. Uh, that's true. Yes. Yeah, there, there is some de the development in, in, in that direction. Um, uh, coming back to the slideshow, um, my, 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 uh, what I'd like to say here is you can, if you want to hide content um, based on the device uh, uh, and you want to use techniques like uh, hidden dash phone, then it might be better to use the, uh, the plugin which so, that so that it's not being downloaded instead of just hidden and still being downloaded. That's what I'm trying to say here. Okay. Are you a big fan of it? Do you use it or do you just use it if your client demands you to? We do it as I, when our clients demand it for. Okay, yeah. so not, it's not a choice of yourself to hide stuff on other users? No, no, no. no. Yeah, you got a new solution to your problem, so it's a better solution than just hide it for the user. Yeah. Well, we also, well, what we also what we also used a lot for is when you have large background images, uh, we don't load them on, on mobile devices. Yeah. 
you can have a, a beautiful background image with a uh, that's that's a heavy image on a uh, on a desktop. But like you're saying, uh, uh, when you're on a desktop PC on a 3G connection yeah. using tittering, then you, you might still have the same problem. Interesting discussion, thank you. Yeah. An interesting topic. Interesting That's true. <laughs> Any other questions? Then I'd like to thank you very much for your attention.